Plants vs. Zombies is a game about planting plants, like a lot of them. Even the game tells you to do it. Planting at least three sunflowers improves your chances of surviving a zombie attack. But what if we ignore that? Would it be completely impossible to progress through the game, or would you need to simply hope to get lucky and eventually beat the game this way? Today, I'm doing the Highlander Challenge. There can only be one of each plant at once. This means only one Puffshirman Knight, one lily pad in pool, and so on. Can you still beat the game? The answer is obviously no, because we cannot get past 1-1 since the game forces you to plant two pea shooters before sending any zombies to this level, so this challenge is impossible. But wait! Don't go yet. Since 1-1 is not beatable, we can modify the challenge. Can you beat Plants vs. Zombies with only one of each plant except level 1-1? Stick to the end to find out if the game is still beatable this way, because we are pushing PvZ1 to its limits again with roof and pool levels under this condition, and how these levels are beatable is mind-blowing. But first, please subscribe. 150,000 of you lot are out there watching, but only 42,000 are subscribed, so if you're already enjoying the content, just hit the button. You can always unsubscribe later. Back to the video. The zombies are coming. We begin the challenge on 1-2, and immediately, you can see the problem in the first level of the challenge. You cannot defend 3 lanes with only 1 pea shooter. The irony is that sunflowers allow this to be beatable. By using sunflowers to stall out 2 lanes, you can force lawnmowers to activate later to cram the last wave to spawn in only 1 lane. Pretty obviously, you can use this exact same strategy again in 1-3, where although the level has more waves, you also now have access to Cherry Bomb which can eliminate 2 waves at once. In fact, we can just repeat the Sunflower stalling into Cherry Bomb maneuver 3 more times to beat the level. It's kind of nuts that Cherry Bomb has a fast enough cooldown for this to work. Level 1-4 means you need to defend 5 lanes, but the game now gives us another stalling plan, the Walnut. Walnut will be used just like sunflowers in the level previous, where they stall a zombie to group it up with another zombie in the next wave, letting a cherry bomb kill two zombies at once. With luck on your side, if any second basic zombie goes into your pea shooter lane, you can keep defending using the walnut and cherry bomb maneuver. Utilizing the lawnmower mechanic, we can stall any additional zombies out with our sunflower late enough to ensure no zombies in the final wave end up in one of our empty lanes. The next level is Walnut Bowling. You just need to wait for a walnut to leave the screen to plant your next walnut, so... I'm not sure what's so different about this. Now with Potato Mine and a Shovel, it gets much easier. You don't need to fuss around with stalling using Walnut if you can clear the first 4 waves with just Potato Mines. The best part is unlocking the Shovel. We can finally replant our Pea Shooter somewhere else when we need to defend another lane with zombies in it. And it doesn't come as a surprise that 1-6 ends up being one of the easiest levels in the entire challenge. But the next level, 1-7, is the first 2 flag level. At first glance, this seems impossible to beat. Intuitively, you'd think only 1 pea shooter and 1 snow pea shouldn't beat a 2 flag level. Obviously, the game plan before the first flag is just the same as 1-6, but afterwards the strategy changes a bit. It's still correct to sacrifice lawnmowers to all lanes without attackers here. The very important thing about this is to move our Sunflower to activate the Pole Vaulter's jump. They walk slower after jumping, just enough for our pea shooters to kill them off. We can also use Sunflowers and Potato Mines to counter Pole Vaulters, and alternatively, Snow Peas can kill a Pole Vaulter at full speed on their own if placed at the very back. We can then use the Walnut Stall into Cherry Bomb 2 Birds 1 Stone strategy again to deal with the remaining zombies that might be left. Combining all of this strategy together gives us enough reach to beat this level, as we simply spend a cherry bomb to easily clear out any pole vaulters in the final wave. And I play this game every day and I still somehow manage to screw something like that up. I just want to slap myself in the face so hard. I improved some lane management here as I put Snow Pea and Pea Shooter on the side lanes to ensure cherry bombs get maximum value hitting three lanes without attackers at once. This now guarantees a win for 1-7 and allows us to move on to 1-8. Now the introduction of Bucketed Zombies really doesn't affect us since we're just going to kill them with instant kills anyways. So the difference between 1-8 and 1-6 is fairly minimal. Level 1-9 is just 1-7 with Repeater. Same early game as before, and as we know, just one Snow Pea or Repeater can defend a lane for the whole level from the 1 column challenge. Snow Pea and Repeater will each close off a lane from any danger of us losing the level there, and we can survive the 3 other lanes with just Walnuts, Cherry Bombs, and Potato Mines as shown in 1-7. Not much else to say, but that's 1-9 completed. Now, you might be wondering how this challenge is going to be even doable in the Ultimate Battles. Since this is a conveyor belt level, it is mathematically possible to play this level and get only Cherry Bombs, which basically guarantees a win for obvious reasons. Well, let's say we play this normally. 
the early game shouldn't be hard at all, with practically an unlimited amount of free plants for all your pea shooting plants. After the first lag, you can use all four cherry bombs, leaving just five more waves to defend. With the appropriate wall installing, it's pretty easy to get back to more cherry bombs to win. That about concludes daytime with only one of each plant on the lawn at once. We're on to night, and this time our ability to plant Puff Shroom is even more restricted than we had inflation, than we had only one column. Surely they aren't still overpowered. You would be wrong again, because you can beat 2 1 with literally just a single Puff Shroom. I don't know how we got here. We went from one column of Puff Shrooms all the way to 200 some Puff Shrooms down to just one Puff Shroom. And Puff Shroom is still OP with only one on the lawn. You just shuffle up Puff Shroom whenever it's done killing a zombie, and simply with the little bit of damage it's got, it is able to beat the whole level by itself. Puff Shroom honestly deserves a tier of its own in PvZ tier lists due to how ridiculously overpowered having a zero sun plant is. Even though the challenge restricts us to using only at most just a sunflower and a sunshroom, Puff Shroom helps save sun so well, 2 2 is not even a challenge. Simply Puff Shroom and Potato Mine alone can defend off up until the first lag and allow us to afford both Free Peter and Snow Pea to close off two lanes. Now you simply defend the three other remaining lanes with Puff Shroom and Potato Mine for the rest of the game, and that's actually all the defense you need. Puff Shroom is just that broken. Since just planting Puff Shrooms and Potato Mines basically beats any one flag night level, there's no real reason for me to show all of 2 3, 2 6, or 2 8, so let's just skip them in this video. There's also really not much different about beating 2-4 here, since Puff Shroom allows us to activate pole vaulting zombies early and potato mines clean up screen door zombies easily. As for 2-5, you don't even have to plant plants to beat this level, so let's move on to level 2-7. Except, shall I remind you, 2-7 is almost always just an easier version of 2-4, since the only football zombies only appear in the last two waves of the level, so same strategy goes here. And in 2-9, now you have Doom Shroom, so any dancing zombie should not ever be a problem to you, as all other basic zombies and conets are easily killed by Puff Shrooms. 2-10 is yet another conveyor belt, but with Doom Shroom, it's pretty much not possible to lose this level if you just Doom Shroom every single wave down and spend an Ice Shroom to stall. Even with just one of each sun producer, nighttime was a breeze thanks to being able to constantly reposition our one Puff Shroom in most levels. Now in the third world of the game, we now have to plant lily pads or we cannot defend the pool at all. And we're limited to just one lily pad in this challenge against two water lanes. But with only one flag in 3-1 and only two zombies in the water, it's fairly trivial to just beat this by moving around a pea shooter in the pool and spend potato mines elsewhere. 3-2 unlock squash. Squash is so good that you can beat any level up until the first flag with just squash, potato mine, and cherry bomb. So I'll be skipping to the first flag for every level from now on in pool. In Free 2, we use both Repeater and Snow Pea to close off two lanes, and the way to beat the remaining lanes is by simply repeating what we did for the first half of the level, Instant Kill Spam. Simply spamming Instant Kills is the most reliable way to beat the level when the challenge limits us to only one of each plant at the same time. It's unintuitive that Instant Kills could defend four lanes at once by themselves, but this is a viable strategy due to the low number of zombies in the base game. Naturally, the more expensive plants are better in this challenge as we are limited to the number of plants that we can use at the same time in our loadout. Repeater is an excellent choice as it covering 3 lanes at once helps reduce lanes we need to spend instant kills on from 4 down to just 3 now. Pop Shroom is still an excellent choice here, used to just slow down Coneheads enough to make sure they can't reach our backlines. To deal with any snorkel zombies, we also have Lilypad plus Walnut combo and they also just die to any instant kill, which we already used to defend for the second half in the empty lanes. The strategy in Free 4 is the same as in Free 3, as pole vaulting zombies don't really pose much of a threat with us being able to just plant a puff shroom, and newspaper zombies are pretty weak. And obviously, you just spend an instant kill on bucketed zombies and that's it. This strategy of a free peter to cover free lanes and instant kills on everything else even works in the free flag format. Instant kills are just that strong even with their deceptively slow cooldown. And this slow cooldown is mostly just mitigated due to Puff Shrimp's free stalling provided. Puff Shrimp's are really just that powerful. Only one of each plant in free 5. Now, to defend this, well, one pea shooter is certainly not enough to kill anything, so you're going to be relying on just Cherry Bomb here. By relying, I mean a lot of them. 
Cherry Bomb Fiesta, shall I say. It's either you get lucky or you go home. You can't really do much else other than stalling with walnuts for them. It's not too bad to beat this level, thanks to the time between each wave being extremely short, allowing us to easily get enough cherry bombs to get past this level. 3-6 introduces the first upgrade plants and also the last two slots. To re-clarify the rules for upgrade plants, we won't be counting in an upgraded version of a plant to still be the same plant itself. This means we'll be allowing ourselves to plant another sunflower when we upgrade our first sunflower to a twin sunflower. Now the solution is fairly obvious with 10 slots to use and enough sun to plant additional attackers. Free Peter covers 3 lanes while Snow P, Repeater, and Gatling P will cover the 3 other lanes. However, in level 3-7, we have another problem. We can only have one lily pad, so it's once again impossible to use 3 additional attackers to help cover all 6 lanes at once, since we need to use the lily pad to reveal the snorkel zombie. It was good while it lasted, but... We're back to just spamming instant kills just like in Free 4. Instead of Walnut, I simply went for Tango Kelp as just Puff Shroom by itself is a good enough stalling plant already. In hindsight, now looking back, I definitely should have brought Jalapeno instead of Spikeweed, but it's still fine as you only get overwhelmed later on, but by then, it's already the final wave. Simply, Tango Kelp, Squash, and Potato Mine all planted on the fourth column will give sufficient time stalling out waves to keep replanting them repeatedly every wave. I'll skip ahead to 3-9, since the strategy for 3-8 and 3-9 is the exact same. Or rather, should I say, the strategy for this is the exact same for 3-7 as well. Dolphin Rider Zombies, similar to Snorkels, disallow us from using an attacking plant in the water as a defense. No singular plant deals enough damage to kill it before jumping. This means we are once again forced to just use the instant kill spam strategy. There's really not much difference between Dolphin Riders and Snorkels once you use instant kills. In fact, Dolphin Riders are easier to beat compared to Snorkel Zombies, as just one lily pad in the row to activate its jump early allows the Dolphin Rider to die to just a free Peter. So, it's pretty reasonable to say that Free 9 is just an easier free 7, since Puffstrom also completely mitigates any threat posed by pole vaulters. Now, free 10 is a whole other problem. You still only have one free Peter to work with, but three times as many zombies spawn because of this being an ultimate battle. You also have Torchwood, but that's only worth so much here when you can only buff one singular free Peter with it. The main problem this level is that the two most common plants in the conveyor belt are free Peters and lily pads, both of which you really don't want that many of. Free Peter's seeds are especially detrimental to get in this level as it is the only plant that we really don't need to get more copies of to replant, yet we get the most of. To beat this, we need jalapenos. A lot of them. One Free Peter and one Torchwood is basically never going to be doing most of the damage as we can basically only use them as cleanup. The only other saving grace to this level is we have Tall Nut with Spikeweed, which basically permanently stalls out a lane, but that alone is definitely not enough to make this beatable. Each Zamboni is completely unbeatable with Free Peter and definitely requires an instant kill, and you don't get nearly enough Jalapenos to make it past this entire level. Not only that, you still need Jalapenos to take out the Dolphin Rider Zombies and Snorkel Zombies, which otherwise you can only spend Tango Kelps on, which obviously isn't enough. I tried my best to beat 310 without any saves coming, and honestly, it might be somewhat possible to do legitimately with a few ways to maximize the chance of reaching the final wave. Regardless, this is still a completely RNG level that can be beaten by just pure luck. Eventually, there will be an attempt where the game showers you with just jalapenos. But I'm not talking about using saves coming to make this possible. Like, playing legitimately. Kind of possible. The secret really is within how many Zambonis the game sends. Zambonis have a speed mechanic that no other zombie has, which is the fact that it is the only zombie that slows down according to how far it has stayed alive. It is by far the slowest zombie in the entire level, and the benefit of this is that it additionally takes up more wave points, or basic equivalents, because of its ability to summon bobsled teams. As we already know, we are already forced to spend instant kills on them because free Peters cannot kill Zambonis on their own, so keeping Zambonis alive is actually important. With a Zamboni alive, it will increase the chance of a bobsled team spawning, and each bobsled team that spawns in the Zamboni lane will end up dying through a jalapeno anyways. This effectively means keeping Zambonis alive helps group up more zombies together, which sounds kind of absurd, but it works. I tried my best, and after 4 hours, my best attempt was the final wave, and unfortunately still 3 jalapenos short from beating the level. Which at that point, I've pretty much had enough of playing this level. It should be fairly clear that without using any saves coming or tools, it's fairly reasonable to assume this is beatable. I don't have 4 more hours to pull off just one more attempt at reaching the final wave only to get screwed over by not having jalapeno again, 
So, yeah, I'm going to skip this level here. After wasting probably the majority of the time that I allocated to record this video on Free 10, we're in fog now. And once again, I'm not going to explain why Puff Shroom is so overpowered. Just Garrity Shroom, Sea Shroom, and Puff Shroom replanting is enough to beat any one flag fog level. Puff Shroom is simply just that overpowered even with only one of them allowed. Since the early game is so easy during nighttime, the easy solution to the two flag fog level is just by simply using a free peter, similar to what we already did in pool levels. Free Peter will be harder to afford during night, so I brought free sun producers to maximize the sun production. Puff Shroom should easily allow you to save up for it before the first flag. Similarly to Pool, we'll have to use the remaining plants we have to cover the free remaining lanes not covered by Free Peter. Again, just Garrity Shroom, Puff Shroom, and Sea Shrooms is enough by moving them around enough, which are obviously more cost efficient than squash or potato mine during nighttime. Obviously, bring Doomshroom in case you run into some trouble, and I don't think there needs to be explanation for why Doomshroom is even better than Cherry Bomb here. The story for level 4 free is very similar to the first fog level, but you just need to plant an additional cactus for the balloon zombie to pop it. And afterwards, 4-4 is basically yet another save up for free Peter to spend the rest of our plants in the free other lanes. This time, it's a slight bit harder since we need Blover here. Blover is definitely optimal over Cactus because we need to actually clear the fog to see which lane we need to plant a lily pad in to activate the jump off Dolphin Riders. Apart from having to spend Blovers on Balloon Zombies, the differences between this level and Force 2 are minimal to practically unnoticeable. Beating Vasebreaker with just one of each plant is easy thanks to how the level was made. You get 5 squashes against 5 zombies for the first set of phases, so the solution is obvious. In the second set, the solution is 4 squashes for 4 zombies, snow pea for 1 zombie, pea shooter for 1 zombie, and the rake for the last zombie. Lastly, just use Hypno Shroom on Dancing Zombie in the last set of aces and then let Lawmores clean up. Too easy. Once again, 4-6 marks essentially the end of the fog levels. As you know, Cattail is ridiculously overpowered because it can target every lane at once at the cost of only one plant. Thanks to how little zombies the game sends, one cattail is basically enough to solo the entirety of any one flag level, making it extremely easy to defend without having to do any micro. Similarly, in 4-7, instead of just using Free Peter to cover free lanes, we can use cattail, which covers all lanes. This footage I'm showing you is not sped up. I can turn the game speed up to 10 times faster because there's literally nothing to do other than plant ice shrooms. Safe to say Cattail doing all the dirty work here sheds some light on how stupidly ridiculous broken it is to have Cattail in normal levels. Pretty sure no explanation needs to be given that unsurprisingly, 4-8 is beating in the same way as in 4-6, and 4-9 is just a complete repeat of the exact same thing we did in 4-7 already. Now I don't have 4 more hours to play this game to explain to you why 4-10 is literally not possible to beat. It's pretty obvious that this level was going to be our downfall because of the plants we have this level. Half of them are just glorified pea shooters or sea shroom. With no instant kills and only one star fruit to work with, it's safe to say it is not possible to beat 410 with only one of each plant in a real game. This is why I asked Exter, a well-known tool assistant expert in Plants vs Zombies to help confirm that the level is mathematically possible to beat under this condition. Check out his channel, link in the description for how he managed to beat this level using only one of each plant on the lawn. To make this easier to watch, the dark screen has been removed. Even early on, every plant already has to be used to defend the first few waves, so you might be wondering how this is speedable. With very precise split P usage, Exter managed to defend up until the first flag without losing lawnmowers, so, so far not too bad. Moreover, he used split P's backwards shots to kill Pogo Zombie. The main way this level is made possible is the fact that we can use Magnus Shroom to eliminate free basic equivalent worth of health very easily from just the one bucket at every wave. Not only that, there needs to be immaculate luck to get as many Jack in the Box zombies to spawn and explode themselves up, as well as balloon zombies to use up our blowers. All in all, it's, it's still extremely luck based to beat this level because just one more bucket of zombie in a wave could potentially ruin a run due to the lack of Magnus Shroom available. But overall, it is mathematically possible to beat this level. Obviously, the final wave is definitely not beatable, so it's just a matter of keeping enough lawnmowers up until then to win. Thank you and shout out to Exter for helping me find a possible solution to this level and make sure to check him out for the awesome stuff he's been doing. Time for roof levels. Now this is where things get interesting, because we are also counting flower pots as part of the challenge. Now, obviously, you might think that 5-1 is impossible. However, in all challenges that I attempt, pre-planted plants do not count as a fail condition, so we can still use the pre-planted flower pots to plant our plants on top of it. 
but the challenge rules mean that we are effectively barred from planting any additional flower pots for the entirety of Roof unless we dig up every pre-planted flower pot. So, we're going to need to be pretty careful since we're not going to be able to replace any eaten flower pots in this challenge. In 5-1, obviously, using a wide variety of plants will solve this level as you still have flower pots that allow pea shooting plants to hit zombies. They can be pea shooters, repeaters, whatever. However, 5-2 reduces the pre-planted flower pots down to 4 columns, so straight shooting plants are off limits for the rest of the challenge. The only two attackers that can be used on roof is Cabbage Pole and Chomper. I put them behind a Tall Nut and a Walnut since both of them are pretty slow at killing zombies. Obviously, that leaves us with 3 more lanes to work with, and that means we can once again bring back the strategy used in pool levels, spam instant kills to kill everything. Give or take, it's a bit more rough than in pool since we have less time to plant our instant kills when we need to keep our flower pots alive. However, using Pumpkin as a third stalling plant should help out here to make sure the zombies cannot eat your flower pots. Unfortunately, the strategy in 5-3 is the same as in 5-2. Yes, you do unlock Kernel Pulp, but it does nearly no damage at all on its own so it is even worse than Chomper here. With only 3 columns, the margin for error is even less in this level, and even with quite literally maximum stalling, we still need to keep check of all our wall plants and we can barely beat this. 5-4 unlocks the Coffee Bean, meaning we can use Gloom Shroom in day. However, we are only able to plant one Gloom Shroom to cover 3 lanes, meaning we still need to defend 2 more lanes. Not only that, the problem is because we are bringing Coffee Bean, we effectively have one less plant available to be planted onto the lawn at once. With Gloom Shroom covering 3 lanes by itself, the only options we have left are to rely on Fume Shroom and Cabbage Pole to defend the 2 other lanes. And oh boy, they kind of suck. Both of them cannot reliably take out even just Conad Zombies without getting a Flower Pot eaten, and we only have 2 slots for instant kills left after bringing Magnus Shroom. The only feasible matter that this can be beaten is by utilizing our 1 Sunflower as a 50 Sun Meat Shield. It seems pretty unrealistic to get rid of either Squash or Cherry Bomb for Puff Shroom, so we're just going to have to pay a premium for blocking off zombies here, unfortunately. Even then, it's still pretty dicey as we need to also make use of relocating our pumpkin. The danger of losing the Gloom Shroom to a Pogo Zombie exists, but just a bit of luck will get you through this level. We got dangerously close to losing with only one Flower Pot left in the bottom lane, but thankfully, the reach of Cherry Bomb helps us get past this difficult level. Now, 5-5 may seem like another one to use saves coming on, but the level is so hilariously easy to beat, it's not even necessary. Simply by using Chomper as just a Tango Kelp on Roof is all that is needed to thin out the stray threats, and we get sufficient Cherry Bombs to deal with the remaining grouped up zombies. The final wave is kind of impossible to clean up, but just letting our Roof Cleaners go is all that we need to beat this level. Now, 5-6 introduces Catapult Zombies, which are a pain to deal with. Without Umbrella Leaf, we are forced to put defensive plants in the back to not lose our flower pots. I once again used the Cabbage Pole Chomper with Support Plants Loadout here, replacing Pumpkin with Puff Shroom, as Puff Shroom is simply the better stalling plant against Catapults. I mostly just killed Catapult Zombies by letting them spend all their basketball, so they roll forward, and using a Squash, Cherry Bomb, or Chomper on them once they are close enough. 5-7 has Ladder Zombies, Bungie Zombies, and also Catapult Zombies in the Free Flag level, making this the hardest level yet. Instead of Magnus Shroom, having Jalapeno will make this easier. This is mostly because we are unable to stall out Catapult Zombies with this loadout, other than utilizing our Sunflower as a 50 Sun Meat Shield once again. Jalapeno enables us to counter Catapult Zombies even when we plant them on the other side of the board. My strategy against Bungie Zombies is to simply use our Sunflower to block the Bungie Zombie from stealing our Flower Pod. The zombie density should be low enough so that we can effectively stall out Catapult Zombies and Bungie Zombies with just our Sunflower. Towards the end of my run, I was pretty unlucky and got two catapult zombies at once, so I had to dig up the pumpkin to protect my flower pot, but not that big of a deal, and we beat the level. 5-8 is beaten just like in 5-3. Gargantuar only spawns on the wave after the first flag and the final wave, so just have both Potato Mine and Squash by the first flag and you can defend. In 5-9, we finally get Melon Pult, so we can replace Cabbage Pult in our loadout that we used for 5-7 for this free flag level. Melon Pult's ability to deal with Lone Conets reduces the amount of instants required throughout the level, and the level is pretty much identical to 5-7 but with Jack in the Box. And once again, Gargantros can only spawn on the last two waves of the level. So if it spawns, you can just let it die to the Roof Cleaner since it's the final wave anyways. That brings us to the last level of the game, 
Since we already know that this level can be beaten using just one singular tile as shown in the one column challenge, you can also beat this with only one of each plant if there's only ever one space you need to plant in to beat the level. That concludes this challenge with a resounding yes. You can beat plants vs zombies with only one of each plant on the lawn at the same time, except the first level of the game. If this video is received well enough, I'll do this with all the minigames as well and see if they are possible as well with only one of each plant. Shout out once again to Exter for helping me out to find a way to beat level 410 and creeps for the challenge idea. Remember to subscribe and thank you to our channel members for your constant support. For now, have a great day and I'll see you all next time.